What's going on guys? We're back at it again. I know it's been like a stupid long time since I made a video. It's been like probably like two months now. Um, I've just been really busy. Um, tell you the truth, I really didn't have much going on either. So I wasn't sure what to do videos on and... I just didn't want to keep doing a video of me bashing at the same spot doing the same thing. Because what's the point? You know what I mean? Um, and then the weather started getting cooler. You know, it just snowed the other day here in Ohio. Actually snowed a little bit this morning too. So, I really haven't been messing with the nitros. And I just don't have enough nitro rcs right now i guess to do different things and to keep you guys entertained but it seems like all my videos with this here the ghost 18 are getting you know a lot of views and a lot more views than i have um subscribers so now that it's kind of this time of year where I'm going to be running this every weekend. Um, I feel like I can make more videos. Maybe get some more subscribers. And you know just. I uh, kind of feel like I'm making these videos for a reason. And not just making them to post with. You know getting next to no views. I know it takes time. And you got to keep doing it for a while. But I don't know. It just seemed like my Nitro stuff. Maybe because I was only able to bash with the AT. Because really that's my only Nitro right now. Um, you know, it just wasn't interesting. And at that time I just didn't have a lot of money to pour into it either. So I couldn't do stuff like that. But anyhow, that's not what this is about. Let's get into it. Um, I've been driving this thing for probably about six months now. On and off. Due to waiting on different parts and stuff like that. Um, I'll tell you all the new stuff that I got and let you know, um, everything that's going on with it. Um, I've got to race once with this already and I'm going tomorrow to race again, but I ended up getting a new 25.5 Team Scream motor. I love it. It's great. Um, I ended up getting the new, new suspension mounts that hold the little pill inserts and, uh, getting the split mounts in the rear and, uh, the split mounts in the front also. And then the new one up here. Um, let me get the, get the old split mounts. And uh, I can kind of tell you guys what's what. See, the uh, the new ones that I got are for the Wildfire D10. Now, you can get those ones, and you can still use the pill inserts to change the toe. Or you can get the ones that are just for the Wildfire, that, and they don't take the inserts. But you have to buy a new bar or a new split mount every time you want to change your toe. So honestly, you'll have like three or four different bars for each each one. I mean, the split mounts you can keep at zero pretty much in the front and rear and be okay. Well, no, the rear you, you probably, probably want one or two different ones but you at least need like three or four of these split mount or mounts in the front and rear for the wildfire ones that don't take the inserts so it's all up to what you want to do you either want to run with the inserts or without the inserts and also the improvement on these is these don't have as big of a hole because it was busting the um, center of the pill insert out so you'd have to get new inserts all the time. And I'll show you what I mean.
Now, as you can see, this is these are the old ones with the holes, and right there, that's how they bust out on the right hand side. You can see it's got an insert in there, and it busts out. And these are the new ones that have a much smaller hole, so they don't bust out like these do. I was spending a lot of money on inserts. I probably spent yeah, probably $40 on inserts because they would keep blowing out. So I replaced those. Which I think they should come with different mounts to begin with because that's ridiculous. Um, there's no reason I should have to buy different mounts for the car because it's blowing them out. I mean, if they did any kind of testing, you would know that it does that and it needs changed. But that was one downfall about this kit. Also, right there, the front front shaft, it lost the um, the little C clip thing that goes on it so uh, I had to get new ones that's the only thing I've had trouble with there and on the rear the rear ones I had to Loctite the set screws so that um, these little white parts didn't come off and lose the little pin that goes down through it so I had to Loctite those because the one wanted to keep coming loose all the time so if you get one, um, watch out for that. I'd lock tight it. They come fully assembled, so you have to take that set screw out and lock tight it. But it only takes a couple seconds, and it's worth it. Um, also, I don't know whether it was for me learning how to drive. And you know, for a while there, I'm not going to lie, my car was set up pretty terrible. Because this is the first um, touring car that I've ever had. So I really didn't know how to set it up. Um, it was also the first kit that I ever put together. I mean everything was put together right. But there was just a lot of settings that I didn't have put right. Like you know my droop and just a whole bunch of different stuff. So I ended up breaking the... Uh, steering knuckle, whatever you want to call it, I forget what it's called, um, it broke right at the bottom where the screw hole goes in, where the screw screws into it, it broke, so I had to get a new set of those, um, like I said, again, it's probably for me learning how to drive and, um, hitting the walls and wrecking some, so, there's that, um, and, Again, when you blow out those little pill inserts, um, these little black pieces that um, they go on the end of the shaft that go through your A-arm, that go into those pill inserts, um, sometimes you end up losing those. So I had to buy a pack of those also. Now, I also advise anybody that gets this car um, to get the detent steering rack also it has the holes already put in it but this steering rack here um, it always has play in it because of the play in the bearings in the race of the bearings so no matter what you do it always has some play in it because of the bearing races have have that slop in the bearing um so it always has some play in it it's not terrible but it does have some play in it and i don't think it should um i mean you look at any other steering rack and it it doesn't have play like that because of bearings so i would advise getting the detent steering rack um another little hop up you can get that just would make your life easier um Probably help the car handle a little bit better.
due to that slop. Um, other than that, I really can't think of anything that broke or that I really had trouble with. Um, you know, I did put the servo saver on there, the x-ray servo saver. Um, definitely worth the little bit of extra money compared to most. Um, because I am running this car for VTA, um, I am going to put some stiffer sway bar links in it. Um, there's a guy up at the hobby shop that has the same car that, um, you know, said to run a lot thicker of a sway bar in the front and rear to help out. So, um... I don't know whether I'm going to buy some from BB VBC because um, they don't have very many options. Um, I might end up making some out of some piano wire. Or um, I might talk to that guy again at the track. And um, he's, I think he said he got ones from um, Team Associated Car or something like that that fit. So I might ask him about that and see if I can uh, get the same ones he did. But, um, other than that, you know, um, not too many problems. I figured out also with my car, and again, because I'm new at all this and I really didn't know, and hopefully this will help somebody else that's new to this whole thing too. Um, the end of the, your shocks here, oh shit, sorry, you can't see, but, um, the end of your shocks here that clip onto the ball, um, the shock ends. Um, the way they tell you to measure them is, um, in the, in the book it tells you to, you know, make them nine millimeters, the way you have to measure them. Um, now with the way that was and the way my shocks had to be set up and everything like that, um, I didn't know, but I was, well, I knew I was preloading the hell out of my shocks. And I thought it would, I shouldn't have to preload them that much to get ride height. But it was taking away all my droop and stuff too. So I was having a hard time getting the right amount of droop and ride height and everything without preloading the crap out of my shocks. Pretty much to the max. Well, I had to almost make them two and a half millimeters longer. So keep that in mind when you're setting up the car. Also, if you're somebody new to this. Um, it'll probably really help you out and save you some headaches. Um, but other than that, I mean, it hasn't been a bad car. Um, I know when you get this thing set up right and, um, you know, if, if you're somebody that does this whole touring car and stuff all the time and you know your shit and you've put together one or two cars and you've been racing for a while... You could probably take this kit, slap it together, and out of the box, it's going to run pretty good for you. Because I know a few people at my local hobby shop that have this car. And for them, it runs amazing. It runs great. They don't have any problems with it running. It's a great car. Especially for the price and for what it is. Now, granted... <laughs> I wouldn't run this for anything other than VTA or maybe USGT, but if you did go USGT, I would strongly suggest going and getting the aluminum frame for the upgrade because this carbon fiber one just has t way too much flex. Granted, you probably could get away with it in v U uh, USGT, but if you did want to run this car in USGT, strongly, strongly suggest an aluminum frame but i wouldn't run anything other than those two classes with this car if you want to run something else you know i would you know the x get an x-ray or an automatic or you know something a little bit better quality but i mean for um vta or usgt this is a great car especially for the price it has a lot of stuff that some of the higher end cars have. I will say some of the stuff is a little bit weaker 
and not made as nice as some of the, you know, higher-end cars, obviously, like, you know, your x-rays and stuff. But, for the price, you can't beat it. Um, again, the only problem with it is, if you do break something, you gotta order your parts. Um, VBC, you can order from there, but again, you're getting them from China, it's gonna take a couple weeks to get here. Now, there's also TQ... RC Racing, where you they stock almost all the parts for this car. Um, where I live in Ohio from California, it takes about three days to get here. So that's not bad at all. I don't mind that. That's not too bad if you break something. So, um, you know, that's just my review of this car after the six months. Um, if you guys have any questions, throw them down in the comments or... Um, Anything else, anything you want to say, just throw it down in the comments. Um, if you like this video, hit like. You know, go ahead and hit that subscribe button and help me out with them subscribers. And uh, let's get them up there a little bit higher. And uh, hopefully, now that the race season is starting, I'll be able to start making a few more videos. And um, get a little bit more back on track and start putting out some videos every week. Um... Have a great weekend, guys. I hope you enjoyed this video. Peace.